Hello everyone. Welcome back to Oceanography. In today's session, we will be knowing about the temperature of the ocean water. So let's move into our topic. Temperature is one of the most important property of ocean water. It is an important factor in controlling the characteristics and the movement of the ocean water. The type and distribution of any marine fauna and flora largely depends on the temperature of the ocean water. Hence, the ocean temperature plays an important role for all the marine organisms including the case of phytoplanktons and zooplanktons. It is the temperature of the ocean water that also affects the climate of a coastal area and the plants and animals associated with it. If we take the case of the temperature in the ocean water, we can identify three layers from surface to the bottom over middle and lower latitude areas. Let's look into which are those three layers. The first layer is a top layer of warm oceanic water. It is followed by a layer known as thermocline layer and the third layer is a very cold layer that extends up to the deep ocean floor. So this is the three type of layers that we will be dealing with. The first layer represents the top layer of warm oceanic water. This layer is about 500 meter thick and the temperature in this re region ranges between 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius. The first layer or this layer within the tropics is present throughout the year but at the same time in case of mid latitude areas this layer will develop only during summers the second layer is called the thermocline layer the thermocline layer is characterized by rapid decrease in the temperature with increasing depth this layer is generally about 500 to 1000 meter in thick the third layer is a very cold layer and it extends up to the deep ocean floor. In Arctic and Antarctic latitudes, if you take the case, the surface temperature itself will be close to 0 degrees Celsius. What is the daily range of temperature? If you take the difference between the maximum and the minimum temperature of a day, it is known as the daily or the diurnal range of temperature. So, how you are going to get the daily or the diurnal range of temperature? Simple, you can sub subtract the minimum temperature from the maximum temperature of a day. So, at what time the ocean water will experience the maximum temperature? At 2 p.m. At the same time, the ocean water experiences its minimum temperature at 5 a.m. There are several factors that determines the diurnal range of temperature. The stability or the instability of the air, the stratification of seawater and the condition of the sea also influences the diurnal range of temperature. If you take the case of a uh, condition of the sky, the heating and the cooling of the ocean water will be very rapid under clear sky and hence the diurnal range of temperature will be a bit higher under a clear sky when you compare with that of an overcast sky with a strong air circulation. The annual range of temperature is generally the difference between the warmest month in a year and the coldest month in a year. So we will be calculating or finding the annual range of temperature by subtracting the main monthly temperature of the coldest month from the main monthly temperature of the warmest month. The maximum temperature is experienced by the ocean water in the month of August. At the same time, it experiences the minimum temperature in the month of February. The average annual range of temperature of ocean water is significant while you compare the case of a diurnal range of temperature. Because the annual range of temperature of ocean water is generally minus 12 degrees Celsius. At the same time, a diurnal range of temperature of the ocean water is slightly insignificant because the difference is even less than 1 degree Celsius. 
the annual range of temperature is generally higher in a closed sea than in a case of open sea. Let's look into some of the factors that control the distribution of ocean water. First, we can take the case of latitudes. The temperature of the surface water always decreases from equator towards the poles. What may be the reason? Obviously, it is our insulation or the solar radiation. The sun's rays is directly over the equatorial regions and it becomes more and more slanting as we move from equator to the higher latitudes. And hence, the amount of insulation gradually decreases as we move from equator towards the poles. The second factor that determines the distribution of temperature of ocean water is the unequal distribution of land and water. We know that the northern hemisphere is dominated by land area as a result of which these areas receive more heat since they have a direct contact with the larger extent of land. At the same time, the southern hemisphere, the temperature of the water will be comparatively very low because of the dominance of water. Moreover, the temperature in an enclosed sea in low latitudes is higher because of the influence of the surrounding land area. At the same time, it is contrary in case of open ocean. The third factor that determines the ocean water temperature is the prevailing wind. The wind direction largely affects the distribution of temperature of ocean water. The offshore winds always replaces the warm water by cold water and thus it lowers the temperature of that area. Whereas the onshore winds always tends to pile up the warm water near to the coast and temperature raises the temperature of that area. You can take the example of the trade winds. If you take the case of the trade winds in the lower latitudes, it lowers the temperature in the tropical areas, especially in the eastern coast. At the same time, what happens? It will raise the temperature in the western margin of the oceans because of its onshore position. Ocean current is another factor that determines the temperature of ocean water. Warm current always raises the temperature of ocean water, whereas the cold current lowers the temperature of the ocean water. Take the case of the Gulf Stream and the Labrador current. You all know that the Gulf Stream is a warm current and it raises the temperature near the eastern coast of North America. At the same time, Labrador current, a very cold current, lowers the temperature near the northeast coast of North America. Besides these factors, there are some minor factors that also determine the temperature of the ocean water. You can take the case of submarine ridges, weather conditions like a storm and cyclone, the evaporation and condensation, and the location of the shape and the sea also affects the distribution of temperature of ocean water. Now, how the ocean temperature or the distribution pattern of the ocean temperature water is studied. Generally, it is being dealt with two ways. One, in the case of through the horizontal distribution of temperature of ocean water and the second one studied through the vertical distribution of temperature of ocean water. The horizontal distribution of the temperature of the ocean water is studied from equator towards the polewards. The horizontal distribution of temperature is mainly influenced by our solar radiation or the solar energy that enters the ocean from the sun. The ocean water absorbs the solar energy and it acts as a reservoir of heat. Thus, there is an increase in the surface temperature as one moves from poles towards the equator. The variation in the temperature also occurs from place to place through unequal distribution of salinity, ocean currents and adjacent land masses. In horizontal distribution of ocean temperature, the influence of ocean current is quite significant. We already told that the warm ocean current always increases the temperature of ocean water and the cold current decreases the temperature of ocean water. The seasonal change in the temperature is also greater in Atlantic Ocean than in Pacific Ocean. 
Why? Because of its small size. The seasonal change in the temperature is also greater in oceans of northern hemisphere than in southern hemisphere. Because of the effect of cool air masses that move over the ocean from the northern land masses during the winter. The temperature of open sea remains more or less uniform. But at the same time, the temperature of an enclosed sea is higher during the summer and lower during the winter. The salinity of the ocean water also plays an important factor here. It enables to absorb more heat. Therefore, the water with more salinity have more temperature. At the same time, water having less salinity have lower temperature. Take the case of vertical distribution of temperature. The distribution of temperature while we study from the ocean surface or the top to its bottom we call them as vertical distribution of temperature. The maximum temperature of ocean can be always witnessed at the surface because it directly receives the insulation and what happens is that the heat is transmitted to the lower sections of the ocean through the mechanism of conduction. We know that the solar rays will very effectively penetrate and it penetrates up to 20 meter depth. But at the same time, it will seldom go beyond 200 meter depth. Thus, the temperature decreases with increasing depth. On the basis of this condition, the oceans are generally or vertically divided into two zones, two main zones. A euphotic zone or a photic zone and an aphotic zone. So, the euphotic zone generally represents the top layer of the ocean water up to a depth of 200 meter. Here, this region will be directly receiving the solar radiation. I already told you that up to 20 meter, the sun's rays will be direct over the ocean water and from 20 meter, to 200 meter it will or the heat of the ocean water will be transmitted through the process of conduction. So the photic or the euphotic zone receives solar radiation and it is from 0 meter to 200 meter depth. The second zone is the aphotic zone. It extends from 200 meter depth to the bottom of the ocean. This region do not receives any solar radiation. So, let's look into some of the salient features of the vertical distribution of ocean water temperature. I told you that in the beginning, the temperature will be very high and it starts decreasing at a rapid rate. And then beyond the 200 meter depth, it do not receive any solar rays. So, let's look into some salient features of the temperature. With increasing depth, though the temperature decreases with increasing depth in the ocean water, the rate of decrease is not uniform everywhere. The diurnal range and the annual range of temperature will cease after a depth of 30 feet and 600 feet respectively. The rate of decrease of temperature with increasing depth is more rapid near to the equator while we compare with that of the poles. The rate of decrease of temperature with increasing depth becomes lower in areas where the sea surface water is driven away by offshore winds. And it is contrary in case of areas where the sea surface water is driven by onshore winds. In some areas, higher temperature is recorded at a greater depth, like the case of Sargasso Sea and Red Sea. So with this, an idea I hope that you got about the ocean water temperature. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you and have a nice day.